Welcome to The Point of View. This is City TV. We bring you the show Mondays and Wednesdays at 9 p.m. It's your number one current affairs show on television. We get you the right guests. We choose the right topics. We ask the guests relevant questions. And we hope you learn something new every time. It's an interactive show. We'd like to hear from you, particularly tonight, because an interactive show, which is also based on your experience and your opinions. So our hashtag is Point of View. And of course, we're on Facebook Live. If you're watching, you can send in your thoughts. We have a big topic for you tonight. So it's been a very, very big issue to do with the communication service tax, affectionately called the talk tax. What is really this talk tax? It was increased in the 20, in the July budget from 6 to 9%. It generated a lot of controversy. I'm going to tackle it from a very interesting angle. When we come back, I'll tell you who my guests are. Stay with us. So the Minister for Communication uh, addressed the press today in what the government calls the Meet the Press series. It was an 18-page statement she read. Those of us who were monitoring were waiting for just one issue. That was issue number one of the six or seven issues she addressed. And tonight, I have the Deputy Minister for Communication, who is also a member of Parliament for Eutu Senior West, George Nenyi Anda. He also happens to be a former telco executive. He ran some of the largest telcos in this country a few years before he entered the political game. George Anda, great to have you. Good evening. Good evening, Bernard, and good evening to your viewers. It's great to be here on one of the, the most discerning, one of the most popular programs. So I, I, I look forward to a great discussion this evening. I look forward to it too. Good evening to my co-panelists as well. His name is uh, William Demitia. William is an associate with Ali Nasha and Associates. We like to see them as one of the most credible tax analysts in the country. Great to have you on the show. Thank you very much, Bernard. Thank you to your viewers as well. Brilliant. So tonight I have two things I need to do. I need to understand what government is trying to achieve. And I also need to get educated on the tax because last week on radio, people tried to explain the increment. All kinds of numbers were coming through. People said the tax had been increased by 50%. Some said whatever. We couldn't get it. So William will break down the tax increment for us. He would also help us appreciate some of the complaints that telcos have been putting out that They've been, they have been overtaxed. We'll look at some of the taxes they have to pay and whether this is true or not. But let me start with the, the Deputy Minister. So your minister and your team, you addressed a press conference today, and though you said you had seven or six different points, we were monitoring issue number one, CST. That was the big issue. And I think she spent a bit of time on that. So give me the key point you wanted to make on the CST or the talk tax. What is it that government wanted the people of Ghana to understand today, based on your press conference? Okay, thank you very much. I think there are a number of points that government wanted the people of Ghana to understand. Mm. The first point being that the top tax was introduced in 2006 at 2%. Mm -hmm. After 2006, the administration that came in increased it by 300% to 6%. We then have given a number of reasons why there's a need to increase a top tax and is to help us generate revenue to be able to secure our cyberspace. Mm -hmm. Bernard, the data globally shows that as at 2018, the cyber related frauds in the world was in the region of about $600 billion. It is projected that it would go to about $21 trillion by 2021, if nothing is done about it. You translate it to Ghana. 2018, CID Ghana Police, they are saying that as of 2018, the cyber-related um, frauds that were reported, okay, was around $105 million. Now, these reported cases are uh, impersonation, um, cyber impersonation, mobile money fraud. Um, I mean, all those, all those 419 activities that are, that are termed as cyber-related activities. Mm -hmm. You also remember that with the school placement, recently the school placement activity that, that took place at the Independence Square, yeah. there were reports that the system had been hacked. And so people who didn't even qualify to be placed in grade A schools were being placed in grade A schools. And the whole system was messed up. So the system had to be shut down. This was all done at a cost. It was done at an inconvenience to the parents. Mm -hmm. It was because 
there were allegations that the system was hacked. So our Ghana Beyond Aid agenda, it's about moving Ghana forward. And one of the areas where we believe that we can move Ghana forward is to leapfrog the space as far as digitization is concerned. And the three pillars of digitization, um, the mobile, mobile, mobile money or the interoperability that is in place, the national digital property addressing system that is in place, and the That's national IDC, ID system that is in place. Okay, so we need to move as far as this is concerned. Everything in the future is going to be digital. Uh, financial services are going to be digital. Um, so right now, you take gift mix, for example, is is digital. Okay, um, um, the HR system of the government is running on a digital platform. The national health insurance scheme runs on a digital platform. So all the financial services, the health sector, um, the agri sector, uh, education sector, every sector, every sector, transportation sector is going to run in the digital on the digital space. So we are trying to create a digital economy, and it's very important that we are able to secure our digital infrastructure to be able to make sure that we, see, we, 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 are, we create an environment where individuals, businesses, and government can go about their normal businesses without any fear. Now, it's going to cost us about $100 million, CD, $100 million in the first year to be able to put in place the right level of infrastructure, to create the right level of awareness, um, to, get to, to be able to get the right level of capacity that we need for people to be able to um, to secure our digital environment. Indeed, you do recall that even some of these attacks, okay, I, I, I have minors involved. For example, this, 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 um, um, this talk the girls issue, okay, if we had a very intelligent cyber security network, we probably would have been able to get some of the, the, um, the, the intelligence much, much quicker. But, I mean, that's gone. So going forward, we need to make sure that we do this investment. Then at 100 million in the first, in the first year, over the five years, we need another like $250 million, million. So what we're doing, or the case that the Minister of Finance took to Parliament, okay, was that can we increase communication services tax from 2% um, to 9%? So, so the nominal increase... From was, 6%. Sorry, from 6%, 6 to 9%. You're right, from 6% to 9%. So the nominal increase was... Was, was 3%, and it took it to a nominal figure of 9%. The effective increase, okay, was out of a 2.2, we took it to an effective end position mm. of 7%. So that is why if you buy, say, one Ghana CD of recharge, what you get is um, 93 passwords, because the telcos were deducting the 7% upfront. You understand? Now, there are a number of taxes that the telcos pay to government. They pay VAT, they pay national health insurance, get they pay get fund, and they pay CST. Never ever have the telcos treated any of these other taxes as an upfront deduction. Okay, so our question is why are you taking you said okay, let me let me backtrack a bit. So the telcos were absorbing the six yeah, percent, or so they claim. But let us take it that they were absorbing the six percent. So they were paying on behalf of the of the customers. And government was receiving that 6% communication services tax, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's no qualm about it. The telcos, with the increase, took a decision, I mean, industry decision, that they will not be able to abs continue absorbing this 6% um, plus the 3%, uh, 3%, which was 9%. And we had a number of discussions with them. We said, take it that the situation is us, uh, is us here. So why don't you continue absorbing the 6% that you're absorbing? If you're going to pass on, yeah, pass on the 3%. You understand? That, that would be an easier... Uh, position as far as the market is concerned, because the consumers, the whole nine percent, yeah, because the consumers mm. are your consumers. They are used to you giving back the six percent or not applying. So let me ask: When you were uh, increasing the tax, you were hoping the telcos would absorb the whole nine. Well, I would, say, I would say we're hoping, but I'm saying that the 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 the, the, the situation that was existing mm -hmm. before the three percent was added was that the telcos were absorbing the six percent. Were they absorbing the six percent for all categories of customers or for just prepaid? No, for all categories of customers. Because some postpaid customers sent us their bills and showed us the breakdown of the deduction of the six percent for some of the networks. So I'm not sure if for all the networks well everybody I'm was getting the six percent absorbed or whether they classified you know because you guys do differential pricing. Yes. You, you, you typically think that the postpaid guys have more money. So they will pay, and then the prepaid guys, because they are hand-to-mouth, you absorb. 
because when you I say remember you last guys, week when you say you when guys, you were there when, when you were I, running I don't, I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah so but uh, but, but so I'm, I'm saying are you sure that all the telcos were absorbing all the six percent for all categories well the 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 industry information that we have mm -hmm. is that all the telcos were absorbing the six percent for all the categories if you have information that points to a different uh, situation. I'll be very much interested to know what was, what was okay. happening. Okay, let's pause there. I wanted to go to William because you said something interesting. You said the tax started in 2008. To, yeah. Yes, and then up until 30th September 2019, they were charging 6%. And then, but then or you effectively, yes. effectively 4.8%. Yes, but, but you said it was increased from 2% to 6%. And you described that increase as a 300% increase. Yeah. But when you were describing your increase from 6 to 9%, you said it was increased by 3%. 50% increase. 50%. So, William, if a tax increases from 6% to 9%, what percentage increase is that? It's a 50% increase. How do you calculate that? No, it's calculated as the percentage of increase over the original. Huh? So, <laughs> so, so initially it was 6%. Yes. Now it's 9%. What is the difference between 6 and 9 Three. Three percent. What is three uh, percent over six percent, the original, the initial amount? That gives you 50 percent. But do you have a percentage of a percentage? That, that doesn't exist, does it? So, no, in, in typical terms, if you are looking at it from that standpoint, in, in percentage terms-wise, so, for example, if it's six percent of a particular figure and you're calculating nine percent of a particular figure, whatever numbers you get, if you run the same model, you see that it's a 50% increase of the value. I see. I didn't know that you could calculate the percentage of a percent. Yes. I know you calculate a percent of a raw figure. Yes. So once so, the percentage increases, typically economists will say it increases by 100 basis points or 200 basis yes. points. They don't want to use, to calculate yeah. percent over percent. Yes, I, I agree with that, Bernard. But we are looking at it in terms of its impact. Mm -hmm. And what we are saying is that this is 6% on a particular item. And now the base is what would we'll come to discuss later on. So if it's 6% of, say, 100, mm -hmm. what it gives us is 6. I get it. If it's 9% of the same 100, what it gives us is 9. Mm -hmm. The difference between 9 and 6 is 3. Okay. You get it. So, so this communication service tax, how do you understand it based on how it was created? Is it a, a tax to be paid for by the user or a tax to be paid for by the service provider? Okay. If you look at the wording of the law, and again, it's important we see the trajectory of the law. Mm -hmm. Since 2008, the law was amended somewhere in 2013. Okay. It was amended because there was some sort of a disagreement between the telcos at the time and Ghana Revenue Authority on how the CST should be implemented. Mm -hmm. and, that is, and that feeds into our discussion this evening. Okay. Now, the, the disagreement and what even it ended up in court, and the court had to resolve the matter. Mm -hmm. Because the original wording of the law was that it was payable by a consumer. Mm -hmm. The question was, who is a consumer? Now, the fight between GRA and the telcos was because there was an interconnectivity charge. For instance, if I'm calling from MTN to Airtel Tigo, mm -hmm. Airtel Tigo would charge MTN a fee for allowing it to terminate on its platform so that it gets to a subscriber, what they usually refer to as the interconnectivity charge. Now, GRA back then dis dis decided that that interconnectivity charge ought to bear CST, or CST ought to be imposed on it. Some of the telcos said, no, it's wrong, because consumer is the subscriber, mm. not the telecom operator. Okay. They had to go to court, and the court found for the communication service or the telecos. So what happened was the government went back to parliament and amended the law. So the law then became clear that it was a usage user of electronic usage. communication service other than private electronic communication service. So, Bernard, I so, have the law here, mm -hmm. okay, it's, it's the amend, Amendment Act, um, Act 864 mm. of the 12th of July, 2003. And mm -hmm. he's 100% right, okay. The Communication Service Tax Act 2008, Act 754, mm -hmm. referred in this act as a principal enactment is amended by the substitution for Section 1 of. Then the first one is the imposition of communication services tax. It's, it says that um, this is imposed, there is imposed by this act a tax to be called communication services tax, to be levied on charges payable by a user. So there's no dispute about who's supposed to be paying the tax. 
a user of an electronic communication service other than private electronic communication services. Two, the tax shall be levied on electronic communication services supplied by the service provider. So that's the second point that he was making. Okay. And three, for the purpose of this section, the supply of any form of recharges shall be considered as a charge for usage of electronic communication service. So that's clear. So which yes. means that government was stretching its luck in hoping that the telcos would continue the absorption. Well, that would have been great for the market. That would have, that that would have been, been great, great for the market. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That would have been great for the market. That would have been great for, for, for government. Because at the end of the day, the money that we are trying to raise is to sanitize the, the sector, of which the telcos are going to be probably the biggest beneficiaries. But the telcos, because every activity... but, but, but William can, can correct me if I'm wrong. The telcos have said that if you look at the various taxes they pay as organizations, number one, they say the Ghana market is very competitive. For the size of market we have, in fact, they describe Ghana market as hyper competitive. Number two, their corporate tax rate is relatively high compared to other competitor countries. Then you've already listed the number of taxes. So my, my point is that to think, see, to, Bernard, I'm coming to hope Bernard, that to hope that they were going to absorb Bernard, the I've, extra three percent. I have never said I hope that. You see, don't put words in my no, mouth. No, but you said you, no. I said it would have been good. Yes, but okay. they said they are already overtaxed. I don't. And I don't the, mind. The market's already no, hyper competitive. Don't, don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> no, but okay. I'm asking you a new question. No, no. Listen, listen. Hold I, on. I'm taking the words out of your mouth. So let me ask you. Let me ask you a new question. I'm saying yes. If you look at the co the corporate tax they pay, yes, and the other taxes levied on the various things they do, I believe, and that you, you juxtapose that with the competitiveness of the market, is it not fair to say that telcos in Ghana are highly taxed? Well, I don't, I don't. L listen, the thing is that depending on which side of the of the of the fence you are, you can make an argument that will support any position. You understand, depending on which side of the fence that, that you are on. But you do recall that even when the N NPP came into power, we reduced corporate taxes, and then and, and all the telcos were, were beneficiaries of it. You understand? Initially, you reduced. Yes, we reduced it. But and, it's, it's and gone back. No. They were beneficiaries of the reduction. You can talk about the adjustment, the different other levies that, 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 that we, are, we are adjusting. But, I mean, for me, it's, it's a, it's, I think it's an argument for another day. At the end of the day, no, it's an argument for today. <laughs> no, 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 no. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, yeah. if you were doing business and you found out that it wasn't good for you doing that kind of business, I'm not sure that you'd still be in that business. Okay, so you should, you should basically the question that you should ask is that why are they still operating in Ghana if they believe that the taxes are are, are, are too much and, and they are not making profit? You've seen you've seen their 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 profits. Those for those that are are, are registered on the stock exchange. I'm not and I'm not saying that because. The telcos are making so much money, we should try and fleece them. No, that's not the argument. The argument is that this particular tax okay, is a usage tax. The market has been used to a situation where the telcos were absorbing this tax. It would have mm. been great for them to absorb. But they said that they cannot absorb the tax. The government hasn't, hasn't insisted they absorb the tax. Mm. What we are seeing is that the mode of application of yes. the tax... We'll come to the application because that's the second part of the claim. So your, your first issue was that it would have been nice if they continued the way they were, they didn't. Then you are saying the way they are doing the upfront collection. I'm coming to that, but I want to show you quickly what some viewers have been saying about the tax. Because initially when the tax was announced in July, people didn't really talk about it much. They didn't know it was going to come. First October comes in. Then people buy credits, and they get less than they bought. There's an uproar. And then the government says, no, this is not what we expected you to do. We spoke to some people about their experience. Can, can I this. explain what government said before you, to put it in the right context? Feel free, okay. yes. Okay, so, so, so from the 1st of July, when you recharge, the message that you were getting seemed to suggest that you were, you were being deducted 9% because of the increase in communication services tax, which was a, a total miscommunication or a total untruth. The initial Co messages they were sending to yes. consumers. Yes, was saying that you are getting less, we are getting what you bought less than 9%. I mean, to give you the actual, the actual figures, and we're saying that because of increase in communication service tax, which was, which was not true. Because they, they, like, like he was saying, the effective increase in communication service tax was 2.2%. So if indeed you wanted to say that it's because of the increase in communication service tax, then that reduction should have been the 2.2% or the nominal 9% that, that, that increase. Okay, but they took advantage of the increase in 3%, and then the 6% that they were passing on to their consumers, okay, they, added it. they added it. So the, the, the issue that government had was, that, listen, 
this six percent in between you and your consumer you you think that the consumer is doing great business with you and you have decided to pay the six percent on the consumer's behalf if you are withdrawing the six percent to improve your profitability then tell the oh, consumer but, 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 that can i land can no, i land can i land no, can I land? no you, let me you, land. Let me you, land. you just said yes. you just said that yes. they are doing business yes. and that if the business environment is not profitable they can advise or choose how to operate. Yes. In their business model, they realize that, and I'm not speaking for telcos, yes. they realize that with the increase by 3%, mm. it may not be uh, prudent to continue absorbing the 6 Yes. So they want to apply all the 9 and they communicate that to the, the, no, the user. No, listen to what I'm saying. The 9%, the increase was not 9%. The increase was 3%, effective 22 yes. So if you want to... Give back if you want to take back the six percent. Yes. Say that I was giving you six percent. Now I'm taking it back. You pay the six percent. So they are making a wrong impression. Exactly. By applying all the nine after you added the three. Yes. No. 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 But it's, is that it is the message. No. Listen. It's, they are their customers, no, right? You're not, you're, not, you're not hearing me. <laughs> they are saying that we are we are taking nine percent off yes. your recharge because government has increased CST. Okay, government increased CST by 3%. Yeah, but they can say that. They can no, say that government no, no, no. increasing the CST by 3 has made us upset. So the 6 we are taking, won't give it to you. No, won't take no, it again. no, Bernard, Bernard, listen. No, but you get my point. I don't get your point. If listen, you increase something by, Bernard, by 3, yes. you can't detect to me, because I've already told you I'm, I'm absorbing the 6. Uh -huh. Now, the goodwill you had with me, I uh -huh. can say that because you increase it by 6, I won't give you that goodwill again. So I'm now applying all the 9, which is what you are taking anyway. No, yes. We're taking the 9% from the So why should you tell us? Please take your time and listen to me. I'm saying that the 9% that they were deducting from the consumers yes. was 6% that they were paying on behalf of the consumers yes. and 3% that the government has increased. Yes. Okay, so the 9% should be broken down. Yes. You understand? So if they are passing on all that 6%, Government is saying that if you are passing on that six percent, you can say that it's because of CST, but don't say that it's because of the increase in CST. You get the difference, yeah, because it misrepresents what you increase to the consumer, exactly. Fair enough, exactly. Now, uh, let, me, let me just come quickly to you. You were trying to say that initially it wasn't clever that it was the, the, the service, and later on it became so they had to go to court in 2013 to change the, the law. So it's very clear that this tax was aimed at the end user. Yes. This tax was aimed at the mm -hmm. end user. Now, in the analysis of taxes, you have something you call regressive and progressive tax. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what's the difference between the two? And then we'll put this tax into that, okay. that system and see whether we can move it to the regressive side or progressive side. Well, I think from the start point, when we say a tax is progressive, it simply means that the rate of tax increases as, for example, somebody's income increases. Okay. So what we know to be a typical example is the graduated tax rate or what we know as pay as you earn for income taxes. Mm -hmm. You see that the higher you earn, the more taxes you end up paying. Good. Now, when we say a tax is regressive, it is that the rate of tax does not increase as the person's income increases. Or sometimes the rate of tax even reduces as the person's income reduces. Generally... And I say this advisedly, generally, consumption-based taxes are deemed to be inherently regressive. Why do we say that? Because so long as I consume that particular item, I am not asked, William, do you earn 100 Ghana cities? Do you earn 200 Ghana cities before the tax is imposed? Mm -hmm. It is a flat tax imposed on the item that you consume, okay. even if that item is a necessity. And so generally, consumption-based taxes are not progressive. The, you can say that consumption-based taxes are proportional because it maintains the same rate, but it is inherently regressive because mm -hmm. it does not take into account the income-earning capacity of the person paying the tax. So I have always advocated that we should be careful increasing consumption-based taxes or indirect taxes because it ends up impoverishing the poor because we don't take into account, and if it's a necessity, for example, you need to make calls which are lifelines. So can we that. construe talk and data as a necessity in today's Ghana? Largely, I'll say yes, mm. it's a necessity. Mm. Now, government has also outlined, and I think the deputy minister has done a wonderful job outlining why government needs revenue to fight cyber security. I'll come back to that issue later, yes. but let's now, continue. Now, now, I think that there ought to always be a balance. Uh -huh. How do we raise revenue to fund public expenditure? Mm -hmm without creating unnecessary distortions in the market okay. and creating unintended consequences. Mm. 
-hmm. That is why I believe that the engagement that the ministry had with the telcos should not have ended on the note it ended. Mm. It should still have continued. Mm. And the directive that we I read tells me there were a lot of things that happened in the background. Right. And this is what it's come to at the end. But I don't think the conversation should end. Mm. There should be further engagement so that there can be a win-win situation for government, the telcos, and us, the consumers. Because mm. effectively, we are the ones paying. That's we'll why we call it a consumption based. We'll take a break. So my, my tax analyst says that consumption tax is inherently regressive. Mr. Anda is smiling. He will make a comment on that. We'll play a few more views from people on what they make of this particular tax increment. And there are a few more questions coming up on the usage of the tax. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is The Point of View. Today we're trying to understand the... Uh, communication service tax, it was increased from 6 to 9% in the uh, July budget. It was applied 1st October, generated a bit of controversy. The government doesn't like the way the telcos were applying the tax up front, and they want the telcos to revert to the way of doing things. My guest, George Ander, MP and Deputy Minister for Communication, a former telco executive, I need to point why out. Are you, why are you? It's, it's very important. <laughs> he used to run... Um, Glow in Ghana. He also used to work at MTN. He was a very well-respected telecommunications executive. So he understands the business part of this job before now he's on the government side. Uh, William Demetia is a tax analyst with Ali Nachi and Associates. So let's hear from some consumers on what they made of the tax adjustment. Currently, um, communication has been very critical in one's life. Being a student, trying to um, struggle with all other taxes and you, and you added this communication tax to it. To me, it's unfair to me because I do pay a lot of taxes that I think can um, do a lot of things. So I don't see anything reasonable in the government charging me to pay from communication. They can use other ways to take out their taxes, but redrawing the credits whilst we load it, it won't help us. We, the students especially, it wouldn't help us because we normally draw our research on net and normally for me i normally do foreign calls because when i load my credit and by the time i realize thanks to this it reduces and it wouldn't i have to buy extra credit to add to before i can do my bundle which is not helping me at all that's vodafone when you buy the credit the credit go fast but the the bundle you pay the bundle for one one year uh, one week it's finished uh, two, two days, three days. You don't have bundled again, but I don't understand. So those were a couple of uh, users of telco services complaining and expressing their views. Here are some of your comments. Good evening, Bernard. Please, you have to extend your show to two hours instead of one hour. Your program is too good for one hour. Evans Zikwe from Yarifa. Well, I'm not sure if my guests uh, families will be happy for me to explain this by another hour. <laughs> you know, George Anders' family will come with, with will come and say, uh, release our husband to come to us. <laughs> Governments have sat down and watched frauds coming and cyber crime flourish in the country. Why should they tax us to deal with their own irresponsibility and inaction? BB from North Cape. We pay a lot of taxes on communication services, but our networks are bad. Godfrey from Ada. Do they want telcos to high taxes because it's exposing them? The government is getting so choked with tax increments and untold hashes on the already impoverished Ghanaian. The reality will expose you from Barima Kubaja in Jini Jini. Good evening. The upfront deductions has made the government unpopular and predictably they forced the telcos to use other ways to deduct the tax. 2020 is just around the corner. It is unfair for the telcos to be publishing, or to be pushing taxes on their companies onto its consumers without seeking their permission. This is making the government look bad in the minds of citizens. We must nip it in the bud before it's too late. Abdul Mumin Wunam from Tamale. So, George, you're saying you didn't agree with the... So, it's not that like you disagreed with the transparency. You disagreed with the message and the upfront charges. No, that's as far as the notification is... Okay. Oh, so, as far as the notification is yes. concerned, we disagree with the message. And the telcos themselves admitted that they were... Good. They but in terms of were, the charges, they're charging I, us can now. Can I finish? Yeah. The telcos themselves admitted that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. So if you realize last weekend, they changed the messages that they were putting out there mm -hmm. because the reference to the increase in CST was, was a total mis, 
miscommunication or misinformation. And so they admitted that, and then they, they, they changed that messaging. Mm -hmm. Now, like I was saying earlier on, the telcos pay taxes to the government mm -hmm. from VAT, mm -hmm. National Health Insurance Levy, Get Fund, and Communication Services Tax. None of these taxes are collected upfront. Okay, and you you remember when I read the act is a is a usage tax, and the service for which majority of people are complaining is the service that the the telcos themselves call a pay as you go service. Mm -hmm. So what we're saying is that treat this like all the other taxes that 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 you are treating as far as the consumer experience is, is concerned. So you on each of the price plans that you have, you have an applicable amount for VAT. You have an applicable amount for for um, national health insurance levy, you have an applicable amount for get fund, okay. and of course you have an applicable amount for communication services tax. And nobody's saying that after you purchase one product from the from the um, from the telcos, the telcos should not advise you on what your your balance is. What we're saying is that the balance when you recharge your phone. So assuming that I have a zero balance, and I recharge my phone with ten Ghana cities. I haven't made any revenue generating activity. I haven't bought anything from you. Okay? So show me my 10 Ghana cities. When I buy something, apply so, the, the... So when the, I use it. Exactly. Don't charge me before I use it. Exactly. So when I apply it, when I, when I, when I, I buy a bundle, okay, or I talk to Bernard for one minute, when you are showing me my balance, you can show me that out of this one minute I've talked, you tell you are taking X. The taxes are Y, or the tax is Y. No problem with that. Okay? But, again, we're asking, why are they deducting that front? Let me ask a question. Could it not be GRA and the way they want the tax to be calculated? I understand that, based on the law, it's a usage tax. But would it not be, if you were GRA, would it not be more convenient for you if the tax is applied up front? Because the assumption is that once you buy the credit, you use it. But, Bernard, this is the law. No, no, I'm it's asking, not about I'm, convenience. I'm asking him. Okay. So, okay. if you're a tax authority... Can you see the sense in wanting to charge this upfront so you can, so it makes reconciliation easier? Because if somebody buys 10 CDs, they didn't buy it to keep it on their phone. They, buy, they bought it to use it. The, the, the difficulty is that, and over here, I think I need to take my time to explain. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the VAT law, and I would want to build from the VAT law and come back to the CSD, if you look mm -hmm. at the VAT law, mm -hmm. And you look at the regulations that are made under the VAT Act 2013 Act mm -hmm. 870. That is the Value Added Tax Regulations mm -hmm. 2016 LI 2243. Regulation 16 specifically states mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the time of supply for recharge cards is when the item is sold. Oh. It simply means that the moment the recharge card is sold, VAT ought to be collected at that point. And by the last working day of the following month, you ought to pay the VAT over. To some extent, I agree with the hesitation of government or the concern of government because we are only being told about CST. What about the other tax types? If we are talking about transparency, let's go all out. Because if we are mm. going by the real dictate mm. of the law, mm. all these taxes ought to be shown to everyone that the moment you buy the card, this component of it potentially, if it's voice call, because the telcos can tell you that probably it will cost me 60 pesos for you to make a voice call per minute. And that is based on one, the cost of operation of the telco plus its profit. So they can tell per minute, this is how much is charged. Of that, that becomes the base on which the CST of 9% is imposed. Then NHL is imposed. Then you have get fund imposed. And you have VAT imposed on the charge, CST, NHL and get fund. Mm. So of the charges that come out from the card, CST is not the highest. As a matter of fact, VAT happens to be about 11.1% of the value card. So as the Honorable Deputy Minister was explaining, if you look at CST mm -hmm. and you buy a card for, say, 10 Ghana CDs, mm -hmm. CST is about 7% of that 10 Ghana CDs, the current CST of 9%. Yeah. It works out to 7% of it. Okay. Now, if you pick NHL and get fund, it works out to 3.9% of that value, say 10 Ghana cities. So that is what, uh, say 10%, 3.9% um, uh, of it. So that's 10 point. 
No. And the total comes about 22. 22. Yes, then the VAT comes up to 11.1%. So you of add that value. to the 10.9. That's 22%. Yes, yeah. 22%. So of that 10 Ghana CDs you've purchased, 22% of it, which is about two CDs, 20 pesos, goes into the build-up of CST, NHIL, Get Fund, and VAT. By the way, you just explained the VAT. You are saying once the card is bought, yes, the Revenue Authority expects that so the transaction of selling the card yes is what the VAT is charged on it triggers the VAT so even before loading the credit on your phone mm -hmm. once you've paid somebody for the scratch card mm -hmm. the VAT people expect their money they expect that the VAT component will be taken out and by the last working day of the following month it should be paid over after doing the input out with the tax but what is what is VAT is it value added tax yes is it is a service tax Yes, but you see... There yeah, but it's are, not a consumption tax. There's something that you need to understand. When it comes to VAT, we call it supply rules. It is based on supply. So the question is, when are you deemed to have supplied the item for which VAT ought to be paid? So it's not usage. It's not usage. It's supply. It's supply. And the rules of supply change. And VAT is quite a technical tax, and I don't want to go into... Let me give example. So if I bought a credit mm -hmm. and I scratched it, and then VAT, I got a text message from the service provider that... Because VAT is a supply rule, whatever, mm -hmm. they will charge me up front. That would have been okay. Would because have VAT been? is not consumption. It's not. So the CST is the problem with the upfront one. No. Again, look at the wording of the CST law. And again, this is where I believe some of the telcos are having issues. And I thought that the best way to have gone about this mm. was to have gotten the Ghana Revenue Authority, which is the body by law, mandated to implement tax laws, mm -hmm. to come out with a ruling. Okay. Or... A practice a note, which we call a, a practice note under Section 100 of the Revenue Administration Act, come out mm -hmm. with a practice note as to how it ought to be implemented. Because okay. I'll give you a history. Mm -hmm. The telcos and Jerry have fought over what the CST has to be implemented on, and they went to court. Mm -hmm. So if we have a clear directive from GRA that this is how you ought to implement it, and again, that's why I said that the conversation did not end. For mm -hmm. me, the conversation should go on. Because there are a lot of stakeholders in this particular arrangement that need to be roped in. This is not just a matter between the communications ministry and the telcos. They also have to bring on board GRE, which would also be accounting for the tax. Mm. And there has to be a commonality of understanding of how the law ought to be implemented. Okay. So do we know if the GRA was happy with the way they were going about it up front? My, my information is that, yes, they were. This well, is unconfirmed I, again, sources. Again, I so, don't... So did I think as I well. Don't, but the minister, I'm not sure you admit this. I don't think that the minister of communications would come and make a policy statement without a proper consultation being done. So, I mean, I, I work with the minister. Mm -hmm. The minister goes to cabinet, gives me the briefings. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you sitting outside saying that the GRE or Ministry of Finance were happy, that could be what you wish it was. Okay, but insofar as until now, GRE hasn't come to counter what the minister has said. Minister of Finance hasn't come to counter <laughs> what, the minister, what the minister has said. And the minister is responsible for policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, let us not forget that the minister hasn't changed any law. Okay, the minister hasn't touched any law. All the minister is saying, like he was saying, is that you have VAT, you have national health insurance, you have um, get fund, you apply it in a certain way, you apply it. In a sense, as far as the consumer experience is concerned, mm -hmm. okay, as, as a consumer, until I, I, if, 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 I'm, if, I'm, if I'm a pay as you go consumer and I buy airtime, I don't see a 22% deduction on my airtime. I experience those deductions as and when I'm using my airtime. And that's all that the minister Were consumers saying. complaining when they started receiving the messages? Yes, of course they were. And you are aware, we are all aware that the consumers were complaining. And now consumers are very happy. Well, they are extremely happy about the bonus, the, the, the directive that the So let's talk about the other one. You, you also <laughs> said that data shouldn't expire. And that the idea that after 30 days of a particular period, if you don't recharge, your data has expired. It's you see, wrong. You see, um, let, me, let me try and, <laughs> and answer this in a very easy way. Mm -hmm. So the telcos switching their products to attract the customer. So absorbing the 6% was, let's say, in quotes, a cost to them. Mm -hmm. Taking back the unused bundle, 
is also a savings to them. You understand? So it's a give and take. So what the ministry is saying that, okay, fine. You were giving them 6%. You've taken it back. But then you were also taking their bundles. Okay? You were taking their unused data based on validity. You, these same telco, there's one telco that rolls over the, the, the unused benefits of the, of the bundle. Okay? But these same, the two other telcos, I mean, the two other... But that was recent. Yeah. But yeah. we're talking about now. Yes. Okay? The two other telcos, mm -hmm. for their fixed wireless broadband services, they roll over the unused bundles. So why is it that you have a product where you're rolling over the unused band? It's not like this thing is strange to you. Mm -hmm. Your system can do that. Mm -hmm. So why is it that the consumer who has paid for 10 gigabytes of data, okay, um, and you say that he should use it for five days, days or, yeah. or for 30 days or whatever it is. 30 days, he's used only five of that. He has 15 left. Mm -hmm. He has subscribed to another bundle. And then you have taken over the 15 that is left. Because we said no. Give it back to him. Data should not expire. It, it, it doesn't actually should it expire. Okay, give it back to him because the consumer has paid for that. It's like he's paid for that spectrum. It's like it's like it's like um, um, we say we, we give a spectrum license and then we tell the the operators that if we don't use this this um, percentage this of percentage it, of the spectrum, we take it we've back. taken it back from you. How can we do so that? So that's a very popular decision. Very, very popular. <laughs> very, very popular. <laughs> but George, how do you know? Oh, you can ask your, no, your, I know. your crew. Yeah. I, I'll ask, I'll ask, but how do you know if, 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 if I buy 10% mm -hmm. and how do I know that I'm being, I'm being given the 10% value in terms of data or airtime? What do you mind if I buy So, for example, I buy 10% for credit. 10 CDs. Ten, ten, sorry, 10 CDs. Uh -huh, okay. Sorry, 10 CDs. <laughs> and then I use... The, the math lesson that he yes, gave is confusing yes, I, I buy 10 CDs <laughs> and I bundle 8 CDs in, for data and yes. I have 2 CDs for voice. Yes. Okay. How, number one, how do I know that the 2 CDs I have for voice... It equates to this percentage, this, this value of talk. So I call you for one hour. Mm. And then they say my two minutes is finished. So and then I browse on Facebook for 30 minutes and they say the, the, the data bundle of two gigs so, is finished. So, so. I'm asking, how do you as government ensure that the telco is not cheating me? Well, I mean, of course, that's why we put the common monitoring platform in place. Because the common monitoring platform has a billing system that replicates the billing system of the telcos. So the telcos, for all their price plans, for all their products, have to feed in that information to the common mon monitoring platform system. So at the end of the month, or at the end of the period Z, the monitoring platform will produce uh, uh, a table, mm -hmm. okay, or produce the information as to what the total revenue that the telco should have generated is. And we compare that to the revenue that the, the telco has, 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 has supplied. And then we find out where the differences are. And if there are questions, then we ask the telcos where are these, these questions. Because you cannot just do a strict number of um, cards. So because there are various packages that are there, including free night calls and stuff like that. So it's not every minute that the consumer talks that has a, a, a same rate. So when consumers complain that their data is moving too fast, if they complain to you, you have a system of checking to be, oh, should you, you randomly know, check you know, Bernard, or, or Bernard, these telcos? Bernard. No, it's done. I mean, it's the, the NCE has a system. But you see, the thing is that now that they have shown us mm -hmm. that they can do notifications for every activity, let them do the net notification. So that now the consumer, the transparency is there clear. So when I talk for two minutes, you send me a, oh, a yes, message and the say, system can do you, it. you've spoken for yeah, two yes. minutes and your data is now this. Oh, yes, yes. You insist on that. Oh, oh well, the minister said there's more to come. We'll take another break. When we come back, I'm going to uh, ask you questions based on your neighbor's view. You have a neighbor. He's MP for Ejumaku Enyan Esiam, which is very close to your constituency. <laughs> He's called Kassiel Atufosin. Mm -hmm. He wrote two letters. I'm going to read the letters to you. And I want your comment on his letters. To the minister? On, to the, the, minister yellow, of on the yellow letterhead. To the Minister of Communications? I will read it to you. No, but if you want me to comment, then it should be a letter that is sent to the Minister it's of a, Communications. It's a, it's a, the letter affects you. It's related to you. <laughs> so when I come back, I'm going to read his uh, two persons' letters. Two very. He said I told him he was supposed to come. He was traveling to um, what do you call it? Uh, IMF. Oh, He's okay. going to IMF. So he sent me the letter. I said I should read it to you. <laughs> so I'm going to read the letter to you when you when you come. Mm -hmm. A letter to my friend. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is to the point of view. Guests are George Under, MP for um, 
Utsu Senya West and also Deputy Minister for Communication. In studio, we also have um, William Demetia, who is a tax consultant. Here are more of your comments. Nati Ernest Niboy says, they said from taxation to production, but now it's triple taxation for the pockets of their family and friends. Good evening, Bernard. Please ask George Anda that if it's about cyber crime alone, why should I pay extra? I only call my friends and family. Why should I pay for cyber security as is in London? <laughs> Augustine Paul, prepaid customers weren't paying, were paying through increased tariffs, he said. In relation to what we said, that absorption, Imano Atu Ewusi Wompe says, kindly as the deputy minister, would the telcos have passed on the 6% if there hadn't been an increase in the CST? That's a good question. So it's basically suggesting that maybe the increase or passing everything on was because of a 3% addition. Well, we don't know. Um, here are more comments. Ben, regardless of how the tax will be applied, at the end of the day, we are going to be deducted. So what's the point of the government trying to make the telcos look bad in the eyes of the consumer? Eddie from Tema. No, Eddie, the, he's saying that the tax is to be used is to be applied after you use it. Whilst you are using it. Yes. Yeah. Or, well, so it's not, it's, not a, it's not a tax for buying credits. It's a tax for talking and using data, which is what the law says, and Mr. Demetia agrees with me. Not necessarily. Oh, you don't? I thought you did. Not necessarily. There's, there's, there's a controversy in the law, and that is what I was trying to get to. Okay, let's get there. Yes. So, so we need to be very clear as far as what the law says. Okay. Now, if you look at the... the especially section 1, subsection 3 of the amendment that came mm -hmm. when the law was passed, and you look at how it's couched, it says, for purposes of this section, mm -hmm. the supply of any form of recharges shall be considered as a charge for the usage of electronic communication service. Remember that if you go to subsection 1 of section 1, it says, the tax is imposed on charges mm. payable for the usage. So the argument some people put forth, and I've had a number of people uh, a number of tax uh, people interpret this, that so long as we have section 1, subsection 3, talking about the fact that the supply of recharges is deemed as a charge for usage, then the communications or the mobile network operators may not be entirely wrong in mm. saying that at the point of recharging, you have to impose the CST. Now, again, it's a matter of interpretation. Admittedly, I have my view and the court may not necessarily agree with me. Mm -hmm. But this is a view that is being espoused in some body of knowledge as far as tax and practices And what is the other view? And the other view is that, no, it ought to be imposed when there's actual usage. So, mm. again... So the Jew is not... Uh, we are not clear. No, we are not... Which is here. It says... And it for says me, and for a me, charge for usage yes. of electronic communication yes. service. But you see, the subsection 3 is what creates the problem. And some people will say that it goes to try to explain what is a charge. A recharge, yeah. And it says that a supply of a recharge is deemed to be a charge for usage. And so there's that split in, in when it comes to understanding of this. And that was why, again, I raised the point that on matters of this nature, the body that is mandated by law to tell us how they understand this provision and how it ought to be implemented is the Ghana Revenue Authority. Mm. And we are still waiting for Ghana Revenue Authority to officially inform all of us. That would be a long wait. All because of us. You don't expect a GRA to come and contradict the Minister of Communication. No, but, but, but we need clarity. If I can read something to you, yes. because our two forces letter goes to this, and this letter was, uh, is dated 14th, so that's today. Honorable Minister of Communication, dear Honorable Minister, reference directive on CST implementation. Please put the letter on the screen. Reference is made to a directive on communication service tax implementation issued by the Honorable Minister for Communication, reference number long, dated 9th October. The directive instructs that the communication service tax be treated the same way VAT, NHI, or GET fund levy, and other levies and, in, and other taxes and levies imposed on entities doing business in Ghana are treated. I would like to point out that, one, under the Revenue Administration Act 2009, Act 791, the administration and management of tax revenue reside in the GRA. Two, the CST Act 2019, which you have here, does not apply the principles of the VAT Act 2013, Act 870. From the two acts, the Minister for Communications does not have the powers to issue an administrative order on how a tax policy should be implemented. Secondly, the CST cannot be treated the same way as VAT is treated. The issuance of the directive is therefore an illegal act and should be withdrawn with immediate effect. 
If the government wishes to treat the CST advert, the Ministry of Finance should be encouraged to present a CST amendment bill to Parliament for the necessary action to be taken. He ends by saying it is unconscionable for the government to increase the CST, but insists that telecommunication companies hide the deductions from the consumers. If government thinks the policy is making it unpopular, it should come to Parliament to repeal the act. Kindly accept Honorable Minister the assurance of my highest consideration. Atu Fosin, CC, Honorable George Neni Anda. I think he spelled your name wrong. He didn't add I to it, but we'll forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> Did his name. So he's, he's basically said, repeating the first argument this gentleman is making, in a way. What's your reaction? Well, the letter is not addressed to me, so... Oh, it was copied to you. <laughs> no, but we all know that if a letter is copied to you just for information, you're not... But, the but you are speaking here for your minister, aren't you? No, I'm not going to talk to this letter. Has she reacted to this letter yet? I'm not aware. But have not you seen a, your copy? No, I haven't. But it's dated today. Well, today we've been today. at the press conference. After yes, that, we've been in the office. We've been moving around stations. Do you agree with what he's saying? Partly. And partly, I don't. Which part do you agree <laughs> with? <laughs> the, the part I agree with, again, is that I think that for clarity of all stakeholders, Jerry should come out with a position on this. And I use your platform to re-echo it. Yes, the minister has given a policy directive from how she understands the law. And again, because it's a tax law, and we know those that administer taxes in Ghana, we expect that Ghana Revenue Authority also issue a directive by way of what we call a practice note under Section 100 of the Revenue Administration Act on how it's going to be implemented. I think it brings clarity and it's, it, it, it's, it destroys the entire debate that is going on. That is where I, I, I agree. But in the other part So you agree that the Minister for Communication cannot issue a directive on a tax because it's within the ambit of finance and GRA. That you agree with. What, it, about, what about the view that the CST cannot be treated like the VAT because in the, the letter that was leaked to the media, which is on social media now, the minister said you cannot treat CS, uh, CS, CST, CST the way you are treating it. Different from VAT. Yes. Now, again, I need to explain that point. The minister made that statement because when you recharge, you are not told the VAT, NHL, and get fund component. Mm -hmm. You are not informed about that. The CST was singled out for mm -hmm. notification to mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. Now, admittedly, the moment that is done, the understanding is that VAT is not computed that way. But as I told you, VAT is computed as and when the person purchases the recharge card. Mm. So essentially, they are moving in the same direction, just that the concern of government is why do you, as it were, single out CST for specific mention? Why don't you no, itemize no, no, no. all? No, that's not it. Okay. The issue is that mm -hmm. VAT is treated in a certain way. Obviously, from the consumer's experience, mm -hmm. VAT is not an upfront deduction. It okay. is per the law. No. Again, I choose my words carefully. So I'm telling I said, you the law and I'm can, saying that regulation I, is very clear. It's an you, upfront you, you, deduction. You, you, you make your point, I make my point. Okay. I'm talking about from the consumer's experience. Okay, from the consumer's experience, VAT is not treated as an upfront deduction. If I buy 10 Ghana CDs of airtime, I don't get the, the effective or even the nominal value of the VAT deducted from... If I, if I buy and I check my balance... Okay, the VAT component is not deducted. The telco collects the whole money and then later pay the VAT. Yes. So the VAT component, the balance of my phone before I do any revenue generating activity, it doesn't reflect a deduction in VAT. It doesn't reflect a deduction in, 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 in national health insurance levy. Neither does it reflect a deduction in net fund. From the okay. consumer from, point of view. From the consumer's point okay. of view. Okay. Yeah. You admit that. Yeah. From the consumer's point of view. So, yeah. and that's, and that's point why of I've view. said yeah. I said from the consumer's point of view. Good. So indeed, if you are saying that the government's problem is why are you treating consumer uh, communication services tax different from all the other taxes? From the if, if you are paying mm -hmm. upfront mm -hmm. to the to the GRA, mm -hmm. that is between you and GRA. Mm -hmm. As far as the consumer is concerned, mm -hmm. you are not treating him that way. Yeah, you are not deducting okay. that tax from his credit, okay, from then. his balance. You understand? So, so, so you are thinking of consumer. So just to be clear, mm -hmm. based on what you've announced in this press conference, you expect the telcos to, with immediate effect, stop the upfront deductions. Yes. 
and apply it's not giving them a window like a week or so to rectify because you know for example they need the nca to sort of because you spoke to the nca you didn't speak to them directly in the letter you wrote no we didn't speak to them uh -huh. we didn't speak but we copied them so they, okay. should, they should and so we expect that by now the nca would have given them the, so it's immediate the effect yes immediate effect yes okay Thank you. Thank you for coming. We'll, we'll bring you back to talk about politics next year. Now we'll talk about <laughs> government. The politics have started now. <laughs> no, it hasn't. It's uh, William, thank you for being on the show. Uh, He's with Ali Nacha and Associates. Um, you are tax consultants, eh? Yes. Uh, great. I wanted to ask you whether you thought the telcos said they were being overtaxed, but we didn't have time. In a short answer, do you agree that they are being overtaxed? Uh, I think the, the number of uh, things that affect the telcos industry, yes. not necessarily on the telcos, Okay. So there are a number of taxes that are associated with the industry. You are a very technical man. Have yes. they, they been over tax or not? Um, from my perspective, for the telcos, I wouldn't say so. You don't say so. But in the industry, there are a number of taxes that they raise genuine concerns about and that we can have a debate on some other time. You're a big man. A big man. But this man is bigger. I agree. <laughs> He's bigger than all of us. <laughs> George Ander, MP for Usu Senyal West, yeah. Deputy Minister for Communication, William Demetia. From Ali Nacha and Associates. My name is Bernard Avle. Thank you for watching City TV. Good night. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video on City TV's YouTube channel. Subscribe for more videos on the point of view. My name is Bernard Avle. Thank you.